We know that removing as much tumor as you can is best for the patient. But we also know that if we harm the patient by causing new and permanent neurologic impairments, that that takes away some of that survival benefit. So an awake tumor surgery is a way that we can mitigate the risk by identifying those important areas that are critical while we try to remove as much tumor as possible. Of all the medical procedures that a patient can have, an awake craniotomy is probably the best example of a patient-surgeon-provider collaboration. Throughout the entire surgical procedure, the surgeon and the entire surgical team has to listen to the patient. We actually set up the drapes in the room so that as many eyes can see the patient as possible. Nope, no, we're gonna drill. I just wanna make sure she's oh, like not her. startled. We're gonna, you're gonna hear a loud noise, sweetie. Okay, sounds good. A loud noise, your teeth may chatter. Before we even start stimulating, I like to have them, I call it warm-up exercises, to take some deep breaths, do some naming. Good. In through your nose. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Good. Hey, so that shaking that you feel, that's really normal. Okay, it's gonna go away in a second. Do you feel cold at all? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird that you, it's kind of a weird feeling, isn't it? Hey, Jasleen, are you in position? Jazz, you can have, you can uh, open the electrode. Once the patient is awake and they've done their warm up exercises, then we start the stimulation. If you had trouble word finding in Spanish, how much would that impact your life? A moderate or a, or a lot? Okay. And if you had trouble word finding in English, how much would that impact your life? Yeah, perfect. So we're gonna go Sp English, Spanish in that order, but we will do one round of picture naming in Spanish at the end. You okay? Perfect, good. Just wanna make sure we're clear on that. Good, nice and loud. Each individual spot has a little tag on it, and I stimulate each spot while the patient is saying words, reading pictures, and completing sentences. As I turn on and off each little spot along the surface of the brain, we're listening for errors. If they can name the picture, that means that that part can be removed. You stimulate or you trial that at least three times. And that's how we map out exactly what parts of the brain are responsible for each individual function, which or not. Okay, we're gonna start to turn your sedation back on, but very slowly, okay? Cause I wanna talk to you while we do the next step. You're doing awesome. Next up is take this monster out of your head, right? Take this thing out of your head is <laughs> next step. Yeah, uh, let's use these, these are a little better. They don't have grooves on them. After we finish the language mapping portion of the procedure, then we proceed to the motor aspect of the procedure. So we have little electrodes that are on each of the muscles in the arm, leg, and face, and foot. And with a what we call a monopolar stimulator, we deliver a small electric charge. This bit of electricity moves forward, and it moves forward until you get a motor activation. So you can gauge and continue to walk closer and closer and closer to the movement fibers while removing tumor. Once we get to about four to five millimeters away from those movement fibers, we stop. One of the benefits of being at University of California, San Francisco, is that we get to study disease processes in the most comprehensive way we can think of. In this particular operation, one of the ways we study it is to look at the tumor tissue through an optical imaging tool called stimulated Raman histology. A piece of tissue is put on a slide and you look at the scattering of light. And that scattering of light is decoded into images that look like histology images. And they help us understand how close we are to the margins of the tumor. In my research lab, we get to benefit from having generous patients that allow us to use 
as much of the passively collected clinical data as possible. Most of my week after surgery is spent analyzing that data, running sequencing studies and implanting those cells into mice and adding those cells with neurons to see how the cells grow, all sorts of experiments to help us understand how neuronal activity drives tumor cell growth and what we can do about it. I think I'm in medicine today because of my early experiences uh, with healthcare. My mom, who was in nursing school, had the assistance of my grandparents when I was young and growing up. My grandfather just so happened to develop pancreatic cancer. I do remember the change that happened. I do remember the loss and how cancer took away a piece of him. I'm really struck and always have been struck by the fact that chronic central nervous system diseases, including cancer, and especially cancer, can take away a piece of the patient uh, along the way and how that impacts both patients and families. And I think that is part of the motivation for why I do what I do and part of who I am.